This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees, and welcome to This and That, our first of the summer season. We're back, people, talking about ice skating. We've been doing these gymnastics interviews, but it feels good to be back. Yes, it feels very good to be back. What's new in your life, Dave Lees? I feel like we haven't discussed new, With, hair, no, new hair, maybe a little bit longer. Still yeah, black I have a haircut. V-neck. I appreciate that. Well, I, I got the MK blades now, so I feel like I can wear my V-necks again. <laughs> that is, how do you like your blades? How are they, I, have I like you been skating? Lot. Um, no, I haven't been skating. Okay, but you like <laughs> looking at them in your skate bag. No, I I skated them a couple of times. It's just, I just had my final for uh, my branding class. So How did I just it go? That. It went very well, but it was a lot of work and a lot of projects. So I've just been kind of tired. I've been working out a lot, getting my steps in, if you've been following us on Instagram. Because yes. I'm in a step challenge at work, so I go walking for about two hours. So pause, after. you guys. I don't mean to interrupt, but so next weekend, we're going to do a live show, we think, on Sunday. We'll give you details throughout the week. Um, we'll probably do it either. We're going to have to figure out how we can do a live show. It, if any of you know, you techies know how we can record maybe a live Google show. Google Hangout. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Google yeah. Hangout. But it's all going to be like health and fitness because we want to do like a TSL fitness challenge heading into the summer. So that's going to be We want to motivate. We, Oprah said that 2016 is going to be the year of our best bodies. And we want to take her up on this on TSL. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I've been doing my steps. And what have you been up to? I've been hiking. Okay. So that's like my thing. Um, we've been hiking a lot in different places. I'm dating somebody. Um, oh, and I moved. This is a whole new new apartment. My microwave broke. And I baked cake pops this week for all the How children of ice. cake pops? It's a so very it's like, long process. I had yeah. to, so you make the cakes and then you put, you like melt. Oh, and midway through my microwave broke. So I was on the stove with my little apron on, you know, mixing, putting it all in. Um, but made all the cake pops and then you like freeze them, dip them in, put all the cooka on it. They turned out well, so hopefully no one will be food poisoned tomorrow. What's with you cooking? Show. You were making salsa a couple weeks well, ago. Well, just it looked- the guy I'm dating, he's a, he's a very good cook, so we did like a Cinco de Mayo. I'm attempting to learn because I feel like it's time to segue from, I haven't been to yogurt land in a while, <laughs> part of our <laughs> trying to get our like fitness back on. Um, so trying to be a little more healthy. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of yoga. I've been cooking more and trying to learn some things. Maybe we could so, do like a TSL cooking thing on the next month and do some. I of just our feel like we were products. traveling so much during this year, yeah. um, and things were going on that I always felt like I was catching up on my life and trying just to like tread water. Yeah. So it's like now is my time to work out and be fun and be Get a normal. Get back together. Yeah. yeah. It's off season, honey. Well, speaking of the off season, we still have some skating news. So the first is. The Meldonium drama, it's continuing, but now it's gone on to many other sports, many other drugs. What's going on? Right. So the New York Times had an article. There was a doctor that was involved in um, the Sochi Olympics who is now spilling the beans on the entire um, sports uh government-sponsored doping uh, that was happening in Russia. Uh, So far, it's been um, mostly bobsledders that have been implicated, but he said that there were um, about 100 um, people that were suspected to be um, medalists in the events and that if they won a medal, they had to change out their urine samples. And he said something about passing things of urine. I mean, it sounds a little well, gross. He, said and, he gave like them a yeah. three drug cocktail with liquor. So the women yeah. had like dry martinis or something. And I, don't know. I don't know. So obviously, because my thing before was, did the athletes know? So at least these athletes that he's talking about, they knew. And then when they like take a picture of their urine sample, like the one that was going to get them in trouble and sent it to him so that they found a way to open up those B samples and switch it out. I mean, and he was like praised by Putin before this, or after the Sochi games. And now he's like been thrown under the bus, had to come here to the U- well, U.S. Also, people that were involved in this with him have died in Russia. Yeah, two people died like the day after. Just saying. Just saying. And he moved to L.A., so that's why he's talking. I mean, I don't know how credible of a source he is. I mean, obviously, he was a part of the cheating. Is he now – I don't know if he's against it. Is he proud of what he accomplished? There there was one thing that he – they were saying that he said that they are – 
they're, he said it was erroneous that it's he's there's one allegation against him that he's like no but i did like he's at least owning oh, up to what he didn't he did. extort money yes from yes yes that he's was like, it but he did this i and i thought this quote was funny he said all athletes are like small children they'll put anything you give them into their mouths so basically so i agree with that i agree so, with that too thing of where whether or not the athletes knew i think that people told the athletes to do what they do and i think that there is a level of trust so I don't think that we're necessarily dealing with the same emotional age but of a Lance Armstrong. Say, yeah. But let me say something like some of these athletes, they are adults. I think at yes. 2019, and we talked about it with Carolina Costner, and it's at a mm -hmm. point where, not that she did this, but the stuff with her boyfriend at the time, you think you, you got to know. And at some point, like your character gets called into question where you got to step up at in a certain point. These aren't 11-year-olds. They're not 12-year-olds. Yeah. I think at another point where if you're if you don't want to participate in this and there are 12 other athletes behind you that are willing to it it calls it a lot of things into question about what could happen. I, I don't know if skating was a part of Yeah, that's this one cocktail. sport that hasn't been named. It hasn't been named yet. I don't know how liquor would help skating at all, but I, I am curious to watch what happens. Well, apparently the liquor aspect of it was that it would dissolve quicker into their system. So that's okay. why he mixed it with liquor. So <laughs> get drunk quicker. <laughs> get, I don't know. I don't think that's helpful for skating. But, I, um, but I mean, maybe yeah. if it's one cocktail before bed and you're used to taking it, your body, I just, it's, for me, it's so horrifying that this happened after the Sochi Games because there was such talk, first of all, heading into the games with the whole like gay propaganda and all of those laws. And then to this come out, it's completely tainted the 2014 Sochi Games in my mind. And it's. I mean, we had heard rumors, and we've heard rumors that it was that there were things that were happening in skating at these Olympics, including American coaches who roomed with people who had ties elsewhere that would hear things. That I just, uh, I, I believe that things did happen at the Sochi Olympics, but I also think that in sports in general, this is happening. The Summer Olympics are happening. The U.S. has had track stars that have. Uh, you know, tested positive for things. And I go back to, I watched a video that Lance Armstrong did, and he said that in 20 years, we will believe that he rightfully won um, cycling. Because and so many people do fronts. this? Because everyone did it, and he was yeah. just the best at it, and that that was the game. Okay, the let me just talk about this, though. I yes. understand that aspect, that we may, yes, say everybody did it, but what I have a problem with lied to us like the fact that you can oh, look yes. us in the eye look Oprah and I at one point and like you know and say over and over again I didn't don't do tell this. it to Oprah tell yeah, it to us I mean but dare you lie like Oprah. own it or say nothing don't blatantly lie like yeah get out of my life yeah I, I just I and I believe that it's several countries that are willing to do this and I think in the U.S., maybe it's not state-sponsored, but there are individual athletes who do something, and I do think that they should all be caught. So I'm not just attacking the Russians. I think there's a tension on the Russians right now, but I think that but this is But I think is other good. countries will probably yes. come to light Yes, and I think well. that this will bleed over, and hopefully that they can clean up sports um, for everyone. It seems like we've spent so much time on judging systems and trying to make things more objective, less objective, but I think that um, yeah. the drug aspect is something that's really going to be interesting. And the thing is, there's something to be said for training naturally i mean to think yes. that i understand a lot of these drugs what they did is it enabled the athletes to have that really speedy recovery time so that you could train really hard all out and then the next day do it again but there's something to be said for mentally having to push your body to a point where you're exhausted but you can still come up and do it or learning the tomsy periodization where you are able to come up and peak for an event and not always be at the tip top shape i mean i think our world has become so we're quicker, we want to be better, we want to push the limits, which is fantastic. But you have to have some sort of guidelines, one of which needs to be that everything is done in a clean and healthy way. Yeah, I think that there's, I don't think that this is the end of this story, but I'm, I'm certainly interested to watch it and how it will impact sports in the future because I do think that we're kind of hitting a tipping point uh, with the doping where I think that if the Olympic movement wants to continue, they need to get this under control because it's going to uh, taint the Olympics as a whole. And that's a very powerful brand that makes a lot of money for a lot of people. And I think that there will be a lot of pressure to kind of get this under control. Um, that we also had a, an interview with Mia Mosier uh, that came out. AKA the Elton. Elton John coach. Yes, female Elton John. I saw her at World. Did you bypass her at all? I'm I was the plague, honey. I saw the inside of my hotel room for many days. 
I just love passing by um, these people in person. You know, it's always so interesting when you feel their energy. Um, How was her energy? How would, did it feel? You know, it wasn't the same as Tarasova's energy uh, at the world. Meeting Tarasova was a moment. Well, it lived she up. made you wait for her bathroom break. <laughs> yes. You know, and like she knew who we were too, which okay. was interesting. Like, you know, the, when you have like the eye recognition, yeah. uh, you know, we had to wait for her bathroom, you know, to come back. And it was just, you know, she has that energy that she really walks in. You know, I didn't feel like Nina Mosier was quite there yet, but also her athletes were, I think, not in the very best of shape at the uh, World yeah, Championships, yeah. which she, she talks about. She talks this. about that, yeah. She said that Max and uh, Trankoff, he broke his boot five days before Worlds, and then Tatiana blo- broke her blade three days before Worlds. This is n- n- information we didn't know at the time, and that it wasn't something that, uh, obviously, you don't plan for. She just kind of called it all bad luck. It was a bunch They of- were in America. They were competing while in America. You knew this was coming. I mean, <laughs> There's going to be some bad juju. She also saw, I, I thought it was interesting when they talked about the success of the Russian women. She said there's so many just in the wings waiting to come up that it's going to be kind of one after the other in terms of, and I don't think we have that so well, much in America. There's also, she also used a Russian proverb, and who knows what the translation is, but if any of our viewers are Russian can explain this to us. Leave us a comment below. Yes. As you know, the Russian women will stop a horse on full speed and walk into a burning house. And she said that that is why the women... Do you women, think it was weird translation, like Google? I trans- love these Russian proverbs. They're so much richer than anything we say in the U.S. They have so much more cultural richness. So I really would like someone to explain this to us. I just, I picture Nina Mosier on a horse. And I picture Stoboba, you know, horseback going from... Like going into that burning back. house. Going into that burning house, when I see them on the ice, I'm going to think about this. Uh, from now on, I do believe that is why Medvedeva is so unstoppable. Um, but she said, you know, she talked about the puberty changes, and she said, uh, you know, they go through puberty, mm. they change, and so do the results. Oh, so Nikova, yeah. But there are so many, uh, a long line of girls who are growing up, and that competition, uh, that helps. But she said that the Americans are right behind the Russians, which I think is interesting. Who said that? I, I also thought it was interesting that she says the top two uh, Russian pair team, but they train separately. And I thought that because we, when we talked this time last year, um, kind of some of those teams that it's, it's a different coaching philosophy because you have the one philosophy where let's have them train together. I'm teaching one. One's kind of looking in the background of what the other's doing or they know that I'm looking in the background versus just we're going to have two completely separate, keep you in separate camps with that same coach. What do you think about that? Because Phil Hirsch talked to us about setting up a national camp system in the U.S. Uh, like they do for gymnastics, but for skating. But for thinking about this, how would you feel if you had to go skate with Sasha, Michelle, Sarah Hughes, Naomi, and Patrice. Seven one- is good. I'm for that. I I'm think for that would, too. Yeah. And I think, I think maybe not all the time, but half of the time. Yeah, and I think in the summer uh, for these competitions. And we did find out that Skate America is going to be in uh, Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. Now, because how they divide the Grand Prix among the top six. I think that the USFS should strongly encourage and advocate and grease the wheels to make it happen. Oh. I want to see Ashley and Gracie yeah. at Skate America. And because Paulina's ISU ranking is so low, I want to see Paulina as the third spot there. I want to see the three of them duke it out, if not Mariah there. I think that it's time to encourage the competition. Uh, the top Russian ladies, we all saw them at Cup of Russia. We and did they pushed see, each other, yeah. They put, and they, they nearly swept the podium, if not sweeping the podium there. I believe they did sweep the podium. Uh, so I believe that that is only going to encourage um, better performances in the future. And I think that it will get everyone in better shape for their second Grand Prix. And I think we need to encourage um, a culture of competition I in agree. skating in the U.S. Well, talking about getting ready for next season, we found well, out... What's your other question? Oh. Pause. Pause. Um, I, Nina Mosier is getting a little bit of flack because she was talking about musculature of athletes. And she said that figure skating changed a lot after the Olympics in Sochi. It changed towards more complicated elements, which are the main thing now. I guess she's talking about pairs where we're adding quad jumps. She said, we used to be taught not only professional, but human things as well. The ability to understand and weight um, the situation. I know these are coordination sports such as diving, gymnastics, figure skating. But then she says, the Asians are taking over these now. They are fast by nature. 
Their muscles responsible for speed are twice bigger than the Europeans. Everything related to rotation, fast coordination is very important in such sports. As for the results, the ones who are Chinese Canadian, Kazakh, Chinese, Japanese, they do unique things. There are things we can't do by definition. The only European on the podium is Javier Fernandez, but he is a Latino. They are slightly different as well. Of course, we have our traditions, but what is the usual for the white people is on a different level. Guess what we are good at is not competitive anymore. What do you think about that? She's saying that, like, we got hips? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. okay, here's the thing. I understand genetics are huge when it comes to any sport. I'm not going to be in the WNBA. I'm just not. You know, my mom was 5'4", my dad six feet, but it's just not in the cards. I understand a part of that, but I, I think she took it a little bit too far. I think she said something, too, where that the Asian skaters are quicker just because of their muscle. Yeah. Skate faster, honey. Like I understand, like the quick, a quick rotation. They're teeny. The Chinese pair team is obviously teeny. Um, but what is going on with the Chinese gymnasts now? We saw last yeah. year at Worlds they were doing horribly. Like you can't just blanket and say, "Oh, we're Eastern European or we're yeah. European, so we're not going to be as quick just because of our ancestors." I mean, it doesn't. In my I, I don't buy it completely because then you have years where the Chinese gymnasts are weak on vault and floor and they say, well, they're Chinese. That's just what happens. Um, and I don't, I, I just, Megan Duhamel, that's what I have to say. She's a white girl and she is vegan and she is. So we've decided though she should have been a gymnast. I mean, she's two-time yes. world champion. So obviously she's, honey, stay in skating, but she was born for gymnastics. And I was born for so, pair skating. I did a pair lift this week, eh? Yes, we saw you do a pair lift. So what did it feel like? Do you like being in the star lift? Is that oh, your... Oh, yeah. Okay, um, that's your... So I don't love the platter because I'm afraid I'm going to fall on my chin. But, so yeah, the, the star lift I enjoy. I would have liked to, like, I just want to do all the lifts. I really... Okay. I miss my calling, honey. I, I think that you did. And, I think I, Mar I, and Mark is a really good partner. He's... I told him this. Back. I have to be honest, people, he's a lot stronger than Fedor. I felt a lot more safe than that. When Fedor used to lift me, I was always like, honey, did you have your protein shake? Yeah. But Mark, he, he got me right up there. Well, well, I don't know. I mean, that's because, you know, Fedor, those white people, they, they can't lift, you know? Who knows? Maybe Mark's ancestry is something we don't know about. Or maybe he's part Viking. I don't, I don't know. But I... um. Yeah, there were so many things in this article. Um, they, she did say that, um, that Megan Duhamel and Eric Bradford stopped doing the second quad throw because Jillian fell on her chin and hurt herself. I got a text from Jillian. Is that true? Yeah, what, what's going she on? She said there? that never happened. And she also called, she said the American doing a quad is a cripple. And at first I thought, is she calling Alexa a cripple? And then I remembered that Tara Kane did do the quad Sal Cow at Skate America. My friend was like, I think they mean Tara Kane. So it was just a really interesting article. We want to know your thoughts about it. That It was just explosive. Like comment below. Yeah. <laughs> but talking about the off season, we found out that Han Yu is out for two months, which is fine. I mean, okay, let's ask. Is it fine? He's a torn lim ligament in his left ankle. Is this fine? So the I have to tell you. Yeah. My initial reaction when I heard this was, this is the biggest blessing of his life. Mm -hmm. Because, n not wishing an injury on anyone, but I was thinking even for us mentally, remembering what covering an Olympics is like and the buildup and kind of the stress and the excitement that everyone has, is that come September and come October, from that point on, it is full steam into the Olympics. Nothing stops. I mean, next summer, there's not a lot of time for, to have injuries. There's not a lot of time for vacation. You get maybe a week, maybe two, to kind of have downtime, and then you have to be training. So I think this is kind of a perfect time period. This is really the last period of time where you we can We can come to down and have a moment. Yeah. I mean, we see Kirsten Moore Towers jumping out of planes. Um, by the way, speaking of pair girls, Kirsten Moore Towers said that the pair girls with the jumping out of the plane were all fine. And she said that Michael Marinero and Mervyn were crying and having moments jumping out of the plane. Of that they, they would were. Band. Hi, Mervyn. Yeah. <laughs> now, just saying, pair girls, they are respect, just in yeah. general, in life. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that... This is the time to come down, maybe do a different type of conditioning, work on you know an area of strength that you want to address that's not on your feet. And I, I don't think that this will impact on you much. I think he'll still be able to do maybe shows later on in the summer if he does. Yeah, if he get can. back or, into it a little slower. 
Um, yeah. And try to kind of get over, I think, what I'm sure was a disappointment after that world championship. Would you be nervous two months off in the summer? I mean, it's, it's, it feels and early. Two months off is always just, uh, but if ever there were a time, it's now. So I think he probably will be okay. But conversely, we saw on social media, on our Instagram, instagram.com slash lesson. Follow us there. Posting all Follow us different- because we're following you. We're following everyone. Skaters, we like oh, to- Oh, that's a good post- tagline. Your um, branding class is coming into play. Follow us because we're following you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but okay, so we posted some videos that I want to discuss. First of all, Tim Belensky, he was back at the World Arena. We saw him last year at Broadmoor Open doing that quad south cow. So maybe it's like the Colorado, he likes the altitude, which Dave Lee didn't love so much when he was doing his little workout with Alexa last year. Doing the quad south now, asking, mm-hmm. does. Is this like kind of a make or break season for him? We talk about this is all the... So I think that Tim is one of the athletes that we need to kind of push because, look, Tim had his moment. You know, <laughs> the gods, Marta, whoever, kind of gave him Skate, Amer- Skate Canada last year. Long program. Let's specify. Long program. He came through. He had the performance of his life. And he went to nationals did with... Well. Did well and had the expectation to do well. Mm-hmm. And he skated so well in the short program, wound up in that last group, and he stood up to the task mentally. So I think that this is someone that has proven that he has something and that he's at a point in his development where he's ready to keep improving. And I think he's shown that he can do a quad jump. I know um, that, you know, there are Mitch Moyer, you know, there's is some, Justin Dillon is underneath him in athlete development, and they're working together. What happened Tim- to Lindsey Weber? Was, did he usurp Lindsey Weber for that job? He did, honey. Oh, did he? Oh, Parabens. Yes. Okay, yeah. Parabens, because they and now what is the friendship like between the two of them? Uh, who knows? But you know, that's <laughs> that's the job that she wanted. I, didn't she take from Mitch Moyer? Uh, yeah. Oh, he signed her petitions, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Parabens. Justin Parabens. Dylan. Parabens. So I think that Justin Dillon is making things happen. I think that Tim Delensky is someone that we should – you talk about that training. He trains really well when he's in Colorado. I would keep him there. More time out of the year, I think he and Max can train together. Yeah, push I know. each other. Push each other. You know, I think that that's something where Tim Delensky is an athlete that I would kind of – I would have him to kind of give him that – third spot the Skate America, try to get him these assignments, uh, these senior Bs. So he's someone that I would push. What do you think? Make or break season? Um, make or break Grand Prix for him. It'll all be about that first Grand Prix. He's got it. He cannot have a poor short program. No um, Skate Nashville this year? We need to be trained? I, I would say train, maybe do a Skate Detroit watered down program. Don't try the quad. Start trying it at that event where he puked in the kiss and cry. Um, the U.S. International Classic, just because I think he needs to go there every year and show us that he can keep his lunch in his stomach. Um, and know, I think he should do the aerial uh, figure skating yeah, jump challenge. Yeah, because second year doing it this year. We'll probably be covering that, talking to MK on Monday. So we'll see how maybe how we can be involved. I'm thinking out loud here. But a new, very big Grand Prix season for him. But I want to talk about a couple other videos. So we yes. saw Aliona. And Bruno. Because we've talked about Bruno this year being like, eh, she's the one who's kind of, I mean, she's a star, obviously, mm-hmm. from the years. But he stepped it up to both of them doing triple sow, half loop, triple sow. Um, we didn't see him doing it side by side, but that's okay. They can both do it individually. So okay. they were just like both trying it. It looked like from the video, yeah. the sequence on her that they were playing around. He did it. She did it. I want to see them do it in the program. I think this is something that they should run with. I think they have big things ahead of them this season. I don't. I didn't see any talk. I didn't think that Aliona was at a disadvantage for being white when I saw that video. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> she is a Russian woman. Country. You know, because she is Ukrainian. I think, you know, she may stop the horse at full speed too. I and then mean, run she, into the burning house. She, she just not afraid of that fire. No, she can do whatever she wants. So I think it's just something. Look, I think, look, and Megan Duhamel was one of the first 10 people that liked it on our, on our Facebook. And she did but not I, fall. Let me just clarify one more time. She didn't hit her chin on a throw quad lutz. Yeah, they it it messed the timing for their triple, I think, and that's why they yeah, took it out. And, and it was a smart, um, not that we're biased one way or the other, but another video we have to talk about is Patrick Chan and Javier Fernandez, two of our favorites, side by side, quad toes. Yes. And let me just talk about this, the, what stood out from this video, and they also did triple axles, the unison. I mean, yeah. it was, and they slowed it down so you can see the unison is ooh, on and point. And you can watch the technique. So they, neither one has a traditional axle. K 
tick, mm-hmm. you know, where you're supposed to go up and around the steps. You know, you're supposed to be like you're jumping up the stepping, steps. Uh, stepping onto a horse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I rode a horse yesterday too. Okay, keep going. Yeah, what have you been doing? In I, an don't... I, know, I don't know. My life has changed. Okay, keep going. Yeah. I'm getting out of the house now. What I noticed is that Javier's air position was a little bit better than Patrick's. Just saying. I, I just noticed that. But I thought that Maybe they there's both... a reason why he's reigning world champion. Just saying. Not just his John Wilson blades, but his air position as well. Uh, but I thought that they both looked spectacular. Um, and I think big things uh, for both of them uh, oh, next well, year. What did you think about Gracie Gold's, her new exhibition, they call it a gala program, working with Misha Gee on this mm-hmm. Ariana Grande song, doing a lot. She, there's a shimmy in there, I saw. A yes. lot of like, just kind of like the voguing, like skating forward. Is Misha a good choreography, choreographer for her? Yeah, for a show program, I think Gracie needs to do whatever she can to keep getting out of her shell. And I'm really curious to see. Fun skating, yeah. Yeah, and I think Misha looks fun. Um, He can do some of the moves a little better. I know, I was thinking that. I I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. But okay, as a choreographer, you choreographer for yourself. Yeah. Any choreographer is probably doing the program better. So, but. but Yeah. She 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 was great. They were both great. She was great. But. He really got the spirit of Mariana, like in the side by side, like he knew how to. Oh, it was all yeah. the shimmy, and then he does like the little like hand. I don't know. And he did the choreographer thing that I love when they tie the jacket around their waist to look extra oh, artsy. Yeah, I don't do that, but I'm also. Jack, yeah, you need to start. I, need, I need to start doing. I wore a hat the other day. People thought that was weird. Because you know what I noticed is that all the choreographers they try to dress the part a oh, little. Yeah, they get like artistic or yeah. No, you know, like how Garrett shows up to nationals all dressed. Yeah, like you have to. Hmm. I would like you to see you have a little bit. You know, a little bit more. I wear an apron when I cook cake pops. That's as dressed up as I go. How about some leg warmers from the ice when you're choreographing? I'd like to. You know, you have to start. What would Sandra wear? You know, I think she, that's yes, what... she was the leg warmers and the. She always had the jacket around her. This is what yes. I'm missing tomorrow. Or Monday, jacket's going around my waist, people. <laughs> okay. All right, is... let me see. Is there any other videos? Those are all my videos that I want to talk about. Um, I also Adelina uh, Nikova. She's back looked... training, yeah. And I love that any time you post a video, you know it's just going to be, there's going to be some explosive comments. You know, you know that they're coming, and sometimes you even know who they're coming from. But I, um, I really think that she looked really good in the ring. So I'm maybe she will continue competing next season. I wasn't sure because she moved on to doing shows, but I, I think that that video of her was pretty impressive doing combinations that we haven't seen, but obviously the queen of Instagram has been Evgenia Medvedeva in the last couple of yeah, weeks. Those doing combinations, honey, the triple sow, uh, triple loop, triple toe doing, um, the triple sound, triple toe, triple toe, triple toe. I mean, she has looked phenomenal. I think she... I just want to keep her in a little box, though, because I worry about any potential, like, injury. I just... I, ugh, ugh, like, rest, honey. <laughs> rest. I think that she can stop the horse at full speed, too. And, and run then into she's going to run into the burning building. <laughs> she's some Aliona in her, I think. You know? I just... I get this vibe from her um, when she's doing... But are you getting ready for the Olympics, Jenny? I, I mean, am like, so... Okay, athlete- let's just... Yes, people. So okay. I've been getting into gymnastics. Those are the athletes yes. that obviously I'm following. So Dave and I have started to interview some gymnasts. Our Kim Zemeskel interview is up at youtube.com slash skating lesson. You can go watch that from last week. We interviewed Tamitha Yim this morning. She is a gymnast and a, or she was a skater and then gymnast simultaneously people. Um, just interesting res- girl. respect, interesting girl, good. And we interview. really got her to tell us about the camps because, you know, the gymnasts, they don't tell us much about the camps because they're kind of conditioned not to. And I felt like she let us she in on opened that door just a little bit. So, yeah, so just some kind of housekeeping stuff in the next few weeks we're going to be following both. We're really excited to watch the Olympics with you guys and talk about different athletes, post about them on our social media pages as well. And just one more thing. So the next weekend – we do plan to do this live show, and always you can go to Puritan.com. If you do the keyword skating, you get a 10% discount anytime. It's, it wasn't just during the Grand Prix when we were doing the fantasy, because we're going to be doing fantasy with them for two gymnastics events. But, but you really need to search the website, because here's the thing with Puritan. We yeah. talk about samples and everything, but my product of the month, because I went searching, because we get an allowance, and I said, what do I want? You know, like this is an important decision. They're so nice, you guys. We get to go on and pick all these fun products for you, like to test them out. And then you can go get them and get the discount and it helps us too. So 
it's, it's a nice thing. So they have the kind of shampoo that they had at my Bikram yoga studio, which was one of the only reasons I kept going back to the Bikram yoga studio is I needed to get up the nerve to ask them what shampoo they got. So it, because, was it in like one of the bottles where you couldn't see? Yeah, like it was in, it, like the, it was the shower thing on the side, right? So is it, she, are you, you one need, of those ones that you're able to shower when you're there? Because that makes me that, nervous. It's an hour and a half in 105 degrees with 40% humidity. I, if there's not a shower, I'm not going. That's disgusting. So that when, guy that went to Thailand, he was really into Bikram yoga. As saying. they all are. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. And the Bikram yoga people are intense, Jenny. I, I don't think you need a guy. They have does. really good shampoo. So what is this shampoo? Oh, my God. Can you smell this? This is so good. I mean, I can smell it. Yes. Through yes. Me. Right. <laughs> so it is. Explain the, the scent. Explain the scent. Okay. So it's almost like a little bit spicy yet herbal. Is it and unisex it's very or is it more man? Anyway, it's, it's unisex because okay. there's like a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's not too girly. What is the and brand it's name? Nature State. Which is organic um, shampoo. There are no GMOs. It's vegan for our friend Megan Duhamel. So it's herbal, a botanique, I guess. Um, and it's the Daily Cleanse shampoo. And this is what they used at my yoga studio. And it's kind of like a light caramel color. And it is one of my favorite scents on earth. And then I like to lather myself with the Nature's Gate body wash, which is the pomegranate sunflower. I like to get a little girly with my body wash. I really want to get this now. This is, yeah. Oh, my. Like, I wish I, like, I could smell it. You know, and I don't care if people would say that pomegranate is for girls because I'm like, look, who it's are healthy. we dealing with? Yeah, hey, we're dealing it's... with gay men and yes. women. That's our audience, it, honey. I can use pomegranate if I want, okay? And it is fantastic. And I, it makes me feel so good when I get out of the shower. So what is your product? Of the so month? my product is this Radiant Biotin, this okay. pill that you take once a day, and it helps support growth of your nails, skin, radiant skin, your hair, just to kind of keep everything healthy because – we got the plague. We were traveling so much. I was moving. I've been a little bit like exhausted. And this has actually mm -hmm. really just kind of helped me feel like it's enhanced those parts of my skin and my body. So if you go to Puritan.com, use keyword skating for any of our products this month. This is important because I feel like summer is all about painting your nails, painting your toes. You're going to be out. You're in San Diego. You have to have good. I know. Oh, and I went paddle boarding too. That's my new sport. And I'm going to learn surfing. Oh, in this one where you go, okay, it's like jet skiing and they shoot you up in the air. I'm going to do that. And they give you a, a little video. I'm going to take the video and I'll put it on. Oh, I'm going to the at Giant Stadium. I'm going to... Uh, well, it's not Giant Stadium. It's a MetLife Stadium now. Sorry. Branding. Um, I am going to the Health and Fitness Expo tomorrow. Um, and apparently they have zip lines and Take scuba dive. Uh, videos it, or photos. Put it on, oh, on our I will, Instagram. Yeah, I have to, I have to compete with so, yeah, So, yeah, Yo. next <laughs> next week we're going to talk about all of this. And we want to <laughs> know what you guys are doing to so start some ideas on how you can be healthy and fit this summer. Puritans. But, Dave, what was your hashtag MK moment from the past couple weeks? My hashtag MK moment is Evgenia Medvedeva on Instagram. I, and, and her gold uh, seal blade. Alyona, gold seal blade. I don't want Aliona to get mad at me, but she is um, the silver medalist right now. But I have to say that um, shout out to Jillian. Last summer, you were really giving it in the social media game with your quad lutz, and I think you've become kind of boring um, in the last. So that's like a, of, uh, not a nice shout out. That was like, no, a call, no. like that was a call out. You were calling her out. I'm calling you out because you know what? Kirsten Moore Towers, she went skydiving. She so Jillian, what are you doing? When are we going to see you do something cool on the ice? I want to see you do that Rosano that Stobova does so well in her program. I want to see Jillian get in her mid -beat of a game. What is she doing? I would like to see uh, any kind of video that could go potentially viral on Instagram. People need to up their game. You know, we need to compete with some of the Summer Olympics. Ryan Lochte is going to be out there with his grill. Michael Phelps. I mean, I think that I love Julia watching those diver men, too. Hey, call me. Or hey. Don't call me. Actually, don't call Jenny. me. But hey, I'm taken. Jenny, can't like the diver men. They're gay. Oh, this I is like, I can, so now it's okay for me to like them. I can uh, like them from afar. Daly, right? You can like Tom Daly. You could like his smile. You would like the divers, Jenny. Yes. Oh. I would just hang with them. Go to Thailand oh. together. Oh, so my <laughs> hashtag MK moment. <laughs> Brian Orser actually went on vacation to Thailand at the end of the summer. Oh, bless. Of course that he was... did. <laughs> this oh. is my new favorite country. Okay, so my hashtag MK moment is a side-by-side -side quad toe loop 
Patrick Chan and Javier Fernandez in their MK and then John Wilson Blaze respectively. I mean, these guys are killing it over the offseason. Can't wait to see what they come up with for the new season. And I can't wait to hopefully go on the road with Dave Lees in a few months and to follow and to have more gymnastics interviews with you coming up and also skating interviews as well. So leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think of our products of the month. Join us next weekend. And Dave, lead us out. Yeah, so as always, we want to remind you that when you are horseback riding and you see that burning building... And you need your to apron, people! <laughs> yes! You need to stop. You need to run in. Are we grabbing a cat? Are we grabbing a, a child? I don't know what we're grabbing, but we're... The oh. We're grabbing our Puritan's Pride and a Nature's world Skate medal. Skate. We're, we're grabbing our world medal. Yes. Hold an edge and look sexy. Bye, Bye guys. guys.